Hey everyone, I'm Kelsey, and today I'm here with Peter Mui, the founder of Fix It Clinic. Hi. <laughs> and we're gonna be working together on a series of repair videos that will be resources for local community repair events, and they'll help you fix your everyday stuff. So if you see Peter on the channel, that's what he's doing here. Thanks for coming by and filming these with us. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me here. So we talk a lot about repair cafes at iFixit, but the Fix It Clinic is a little bit different. So can you tell us why? Sure, at Fix It Clinics, we ask the participants to materially participate in their own repair. So rather than just sort of helping them by fixing it for them, we help them by coaching them through the repair and teaching them how to fix it themselves. Yeah, so you can't just bring in your device and have somebody else fix it for free. You're actually expected to do it yourself and to learn something. Well, sometimes the fix it coaches just do it. I mean, I can't, they can't help themselves. They love the idea of being able to help people. But, but really the goal is to try and dis disseminate these skills through the civilization and not keep them to ourselves. So how long has Fix It Clinic been going on? So the first Fix It Clinic was December 1st, 2009 at UC Berkeley's Albany Village Community Center. And there were two Fix-It coaches, and there were about six participants. So how many Fix-It clinics are nationwide now? So at this point, there have been close to 500 Fix-It clinics. Last year, there were over 100, so that's two a weekend. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, there's still so many things that you know need to be fixed. Can you talk a little bit about the types of things that you see come in? Toasters. We see a ton of toasters. Okay, and then we see a lot of things. I'll, the, the, the number one Fix-It fix -it clinics, we, we replace a ton of AA batteries. Because okay. what happens yeah. is people come in yeah. and they say, I put new batteries in and it still doesn't work. And I say, look, I, not that I don't trust you, but do you mind if I try my fresh batteries? So there's some of those easy fixes, but then there's also some more, I don't know, it's like more complicated fixes, but you know, changing out capacitors and thermal fuses and some of these skills that, that we don't have, we're gonna address those in the series, but um, some of those little tiny components also are you know, designed to fail. Nobody's checking up on that kind so of stuff. So at some too. level, this is an experiment. These videos are an attempt to see, can we deploy slightly more complex repair using a video format as opposed to the in-person community repair event thing like repair cafes and fix-it clinics do. Are people willing to try these sorts of things on their own? And, and if they try it, I'd like them to report on that. So I've got a, a broken item report form that I'm deploying, and I'd love for us to, to promote that and, and talk about that as well. So why is it important for us to collect this information? I know we work, um, I fix it works with you on you know collecting this so the world knows what types of things are breaking, but um, yeah, why collect all this data and information on it? Well, so we can inform manufacturers over time that, you know, we, or we can inform ourselves. So we can reclaim our powers as consumers to be able to take back that power and say, we're going to spend our hard earned dollars on devices that are durable and provide good value to us and can, we can keep in their highest utility possible for as long as possible. And we talk a lot about planned obsolescence because manufacturers um, aren't thinking about um, the evolution of these products and the end of life of these products. And they're definitely not giving us the resources, so we have to make them ourselves. We'd love for the manufacturers to, to uh, hold their feet to the fire. And, and us as consumers to reclaim that power that we have to basically say, you know what, if you're gonna keep making junk, we're gonna keep fixing it and keeping it in service so we don't have to buy any more of your junk. So where can people learn more about Fix-It Clinic or learn where they can possibly start their own? Right, so uh, we have a website, fixitclinic.org, you know, all one word, no hyphen between the X and the T I. Um, and I really wanna make a, a personal appeal for Fix-It coaches because they're the limiting constraint. I, I somewhat flippantly say that any two people can start a Fix-It Clinic as long as one of them knows how to solder. But if you wanna start a Fix-It Clinic, there's a link under our website on how to start one and contact me and I'll try to give you all the encouragement and help and resources. There's lots of stuff online to get you going and we'd love to have you as part of the Fix-It Clinic network. So we'll have links to Fix-It Clinic and the Broken Device Report Card in the description. So be sure to check those out and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This new series is coming out and we're gonna be fixing things that we don't normally fix on the channel and they'll be really helpful for you and for all the local repair events. So thank you so much, Peter, for being here. Thank you again and for having me. Yeah, and we'll see you all next time.